Hi, everyone. I am so glad to see you. It is time again for story time with Mrs. Spalding. And today I have a great book for you. But of course, before I start reading, I want to check in with you. How are you? Did you go outside and walk or play with your friend, with your brothers or sisters today or your mom or dad? Well, I went walking this morning and it started raining. Oh! But I made it in time. Well, I was actually rained on a little bit, but that's okay. It was good to be outside. And I also did, um, I worked out with the We Fit. That, do you guys have a We Fit? Oh, some of you are looking at me like, what? Okay, a few of you know what a We Fit is, but they have a whole exercise component thing on there. And in addition, we bought our daughter a Cardio Fit, um, World Gym Cardio Fit or some something like that. I don't know. But anyway, it's like boxing. So I would did that today. That was a lot of fun. And my daughter had to take a test on the computer for school for um, AP. Well, it was AP U.S. History. So that's what we did. Now, what did you guys do? Oh, you stayed in, played some board games. Sounds good. Okay, you helped your mama clean. So sweet. Well, I'm just glad that you've stayed busy. <coughs> Everything is about to open up again, which is great. Um, I will still read to you guys, but I'm thinking about maybe doing it three times a week or maybe once a week. So it'll be so special for you. Okay, but before I start, I want to read today. I'm going to read Curious George. How many of you like Curious George? There's a whole lot of books about Curious George, but I think this one that I'm reading is the introduction. So the first book is always the best book, in my opinion. Okay, here we go. Curious George. Oh, what is, what is Miss Bodding forgetting? Right, I have to have my glasses or I won't be able to see your pretty faces. Okay, this is written by H.A. Ray. And he also illustrated it too. That takes a lot of talent. I wish I could do some illustration. This is George. He lived in Africa. He was a good little monkey and always very curious. How many of you are curious? You just want to know why, what, how? I know a lot of you are probably like that. I was always like that too. One day, George saw a man. He had on a large yellow straw hat. The man saw George too. What a nice little monkey, he thought. I would like to take him home with me. He put his hat on the ground. And of course, George was curious. He came down from the tree to look at the large yellow hat. <clears throat> the hat had been on the man's head. George thought it would be nice to have it on his own head. He picked it up and put it on. The hat covered George's head. He couldn't see. The man picked, up, picked him up quickly and popped him into a bag. George was caught. See George trying on the hat? <coughs> the man with the big yellow hat put George into a little boat and a sailor rowed them across, both across the water to a big ship. George was sad, but he was still a little curious. On the big ship, things began to happen. The man took off the bag. The man took off the bag. George sat on a little stool and the man said, George, I am going to take you to a big zoo in a big city. You will like it there. Now run along and play, but don't get into any trouble. George promised to be good, <clears throat> but it is easy for little monkeys to forget. On the deck, he found some seagulls. He wondered how they could fly. He was very curious. Finally, he had to try. What do you think happened when George 
tried to fly. Do you think that worked? No! You can't, monkeys can't fly. And neither can you, so don't try that at home. It looked easy, but oh, what happened? First this, and then this. So, let's look at our pictures now. So, first, there's <coughs> the man with the yellow hat talking to George. And then there's George seeing the seagulls and George trying to fly and it not working out too well for him. Plop. You see how he went into the water? Oops. Where is George? The sailors looked and looked. At last, they saw him struggling in the water and almost all tired out. Man overboard, the sailors cried as they threw him a life belt. George caught it and held on. At last, he was safe on board. After that, George was more careful to be a good little monkey until, at last, the long trip was over. George said goodbye to the kind sailors, and he and the man with the yellow hat walked off the ship onto the shore and on into the city in the man's house. After a good meal and a good pipe, George felt very tired. He crawled into bed and fell asleep at once. Let's see. Now we're over here. Let's see. No, wait. Hold on. Where are we? Yeah, this is it. You see him falling overboard? You see? And then he took a nap, ate some dinner. The next morning, the man telephoned the zoo. George watched him. He was fascinated. Then the man went away. George was curious. He wanted to telephone too. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. What fun! Ding a ling, ding a ling. George had telephoned the fire station. Yikes! The firemen rushed to the telephone. Hello, hello, they said, but there was no answer. Then they looked for the signal on the big map that showed where the telephone call had come from. They didn't know it was George. They thought it was a real fire. Hurry, hurry, hurry! The firemen jumped onto the fire engines and on to the hook and ladders. Ding dong, ding dong. Everyone out of the way. Hurry, hurry, hurry. There they go. Look at that. George. Oh, man. I think the man with the yellow hat should have been paying more, closer attention to George. What do you think? Because all George is just a little monkey. He didn't know any better. But the man in the yellow hat was responsible for him. I blame him, not George. <coughs> the firemen rushed into the house. They opened the door. No fire, only a naughty little monkey. Oh, catch him, catch him, they cried. George tried to run away. He almost did, but he got caught in the telephone wire and a thin fireman caught one arm and a fat fireman caught the other. You fooled the fire department, they said. We will have to shut you up where you can't do any more harm. They took him away and shut him in a prison. Oh no, poor Georgie. Look at that. Oh no. Does little George belong in a prison? I don't think so either. George wanted to get out. He climbed up to the window to try the bars. Just then, the watchman came in. He got on the wooden bed to catch George, but he was too big and too heavy. The bed tipped up. The watchman fell over, and quick as lightning, George ran out through the open door. He hurried through the building and on out onto the roof. And then he was lucky to be a monkey. Out he walked on the telephone wires quickly and quietly over the guard's head. George walked away. He was free. Look at 
it, George. Look at him go. See, he was all in the jail outside, and then he escaped and walked on the <coughs> walked on the telephone wire. See, what do you think is going to happen next? You think they're going to catch George? I hope not. Well, let's see. Down in the street outside the prison wall stood a balloon man. A little girl bought a balloon for her brother. George watched. He was curious again. He felt he must have a bright red balloon. He reached over and tried to help himself. But instead of one balloon, the whole bunch broke loose. In an instant, the wind whisked them all away. And with them went George, holding tight with both hands. Up, 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 he sailed, higher and higher. The houses looked like toy houses and the people like dolls. George was frightened. He held on very tight. See George flying above everything. There he is with the balloons. He started flying and then he was up in the air. At first, the wind blew in great gusts. Then it quieted. Finally, it stopped blowing altogether. George was very tired. I can imagine. I'm tired just reading it. <coughs> Finally, it stopped blowing altogether. George was very tired. Down, down he went. Bump! Onto the top of a traffic light. Everyone was surprised. The traffic got all mixed up. George didn't, George didn't know what to do. And then he heard someone call, George! He looked down and saw his friend, the man with the big yellow hat. George was very happy. The man was happy too. George slid down the post and the man with the big yellow hat put him under his arm. Then he paid the balloon man for all the balloons. And then George and the man climbed into the car and at last they went uh, and at last away they went to the zoo. What a nice place for George to live. So in the end, George was in the zoo. He does look happy there, doesn't he? See there he's at the traffic light, and there he's at the zoo. And that's the end. I hope you liked Curious George today. And it's okay to be curious. We're all curious sometimes. But just be careful with your curiosity. Okay. So if George wanted to um, look at the phone, maybe the man with the yellow hat could have helped him with the phone. But he shouldn't have been just dialing numbers willy-nilly. And then to the fire department. Oh, my. So anyway, be curious because it's good to be curious as we learn. But be careful and ask an adult to help you or ask an adult, you know, if it's OK for you to do certain things. Don't just go and do them. All right. I hope you enjoyed the story today. So bye. I will see you on Monday. OK. Have a great weekend, everybody. Bye-bye.